Hi, I'm Steve and I make everything. And today I want to have a bit of a philosophical discussion. I've noticed over both in my channel and in other channels focused around laser cutting and laser engraving that there seems to be some challenge, we'll say, around people with, you know, my laser is better than your laser sentiment. So I thought, let's let's have a discussion about how different lasers really are. And so what I did was I looked at a couple of Glowforge channels and looked at the settings they were using and thought, hey, I wonder if I can use those settings for my own projects, if there's some way I can translate those settings to my news. And presumably vice versa, if, if there are people using Glowforge, but they see a, a really nice project done by someone with another kind of laser, is it easy for them to do some kind of translation from that laser to their laser, just so that they can get some projects going? So one of my favorite Glowforge channels is a guy by the name, of, well, his channel is named Troy the Maker. And go watch it. I'll put a link down below to his channel. He's actually super, super cool guy. He seems to do a lot of really interesting little projects. And he has a Glowforge. And quite often he'll put the settings in for his uh, non-standard materials. And, I, you know, I've looked at those and went, hey, is it possible for me to make what he's making using my Muse? And of course the answer is yes, because the reality is there isn't that much difference between the lasers. They're either 40 or 45 watts. So there's a bit of power conversion that has to happen there. But other than that, fundamentally a laser is a laser. So, you know, under that inspiration, I started kind of hunting around. And with that, let's uh, kind of start taking a look at a few things here. All right, so I looked in some of the Glowforge communities and there was uh, somebody posted a, a spreadsheet. Now I've kind of pulled the information from it and put it into a separate sheet. But if you look at uh, what it is, it goes through various types of materials and the source for them. In the case of uh, acrylic, there's certainly some some chrome or chemcast stuff here, uh, optics from Lowe's, which uh, I've also used. And then they have the speed of the laser and the power. Now, Glowforge doesn't have a current like the Muse does, but uh, I, I wondered if there was a way we could do some calculations around this. So. So what I did was I started grabbing some of these settings and I thought, well, the Glowforge speed setting goes from zero to a thousand and the Muse goes from zero to a hundred. So clearly that one's pretty obvious. You can do a divide by 10 and you'll get to something roughly the same. In this case, uh, whoever created the spreadsheet was good enough to point out whether this machine was a basic or a, a pro. Now in the Glowforge world, the, the basic laser is a 40 watt and the pro is a 45. So I have a 45 watt Muse. So for any of these settings where it says it's basic, I did a little bit of math to, tr to say, well, let's compensate for the fact that I have a little more power. So what I started to kind of play with is let's just grab a few of these for materials that I have. And let's say, well, if I have clear cast acrylic, that's uh, two millimeters or three millimeters rather. The Glowforge speed setting says 125. Again, I'll divide that by 10 and say, well, 13, close enough. And the power here was full. Now this is full power for a basic. So that's the full 40 watt, so 100% is 40 watts, give or take. It's probably more like 35. Um, same on the Muse, a 45 watt at full power is probably around 40. Then I started to do some basic math. Well, 45 over, uh, or sorry, 40 over 45 is uh, roughly 89%, so 0.89. So instead of saying full power at 100%, I said 89 for my laser. Now, if you have say a 40 watt Muse or a 40 watt anything laser, then you probably want to stick with this with this uh, power they talk about here at 100%. Anyway, I built quickly a table for a quick calculation from the, the Glowforce settings to the Muse settings. And this works in reverse too, where if I say on my Muse the setting is, uh, is 13, then on a, on a Glowforge, if you're trying to translate these settings, you want to go to 130 or 125. And the same with the power, uh, you know, 89, you have a 40 watt laser, so multiply it by 1.19, whatever that is, and you'll come up with roughly 100% for this. So that's how it worked. Now, I mentioned in the intro that I'm a big fan of Troy the Maker. He's a, he's a, a super nice <laughs> Glowforge uh, channel owner, and he does some cool stuff. So for things I had, I definitely had some stone coasters. You saw me make a video a while back and same with cork coasters. 
the reason these lines are yellow is because I took his settings. Now they loosely compared to, to what was on the current Glowforge spreadsheet at you know a speed of a thousand. Uh, Troy was at 90, well he was at 900 on a, on a Glowforge and I had lowered it to 90. His power was uh, 50, the same as here, and I dropped his power through a 0.89 multiple to uh, 45. So for his, uh, for the yellow settings here, I literally lifted these out of his video and said, oh, well let me just use his settings and uh, did a bit of a try. Uh, I shot a couple of videos, a few for some of the, for these materials here, and and uh, we can run through them. Nothing exciting. I cut I don't know a dozen stars, tiny stars, uh, both sometimes cut and sometimes engraved. Now there are a couple of differences on a on a Glowforge. They have three distinct settings for things. They have cut, which is clearly cut through things. They have engrave, and they have a score. Now score is more like uh, just draw a line. Think of on the Muse, the loose translation would be think of a vector line without a fill in it, a vector shape. So in that case, it would be a star with no fill and an engrave would be a fill. So in all of these cases, while I could have certainly used a raster, I don't believe that they do this on a Glowforge. So I tried to re reproduce the same results and came up with this table. Again, there's dozens and dozens of things here. Uh, kudos to the Glowforge community for kind of putting this together and keeping it up to date. I took basically a list of, I don't know, 10 of them here that, that I happen to have. And uh, again, some are cut, some are scores and just did these settings and, uh, and tried them out. Now there's a couple of ca caveats here. First of all, because the Glowforge doesn't have current, you kind of have to fake it when you translate it over to the Muse. So what I did arbitrarily was set the power and the current to the same value. And honestly, that seemed to work fine. The other challenge is if you look in the case of felt here where the, where the power is, is just 5%, 5, uh, 5 percent. Uh, on a Muse, at least on my Muse, if you go much below, you know, this kind of 17% range, uh, there just isn't enough power there to, to, to fire the laser properly. So anything that's kind of below 17, I just set at 17. And again, it seems to work fine. Keep in mind, these aren't any kind of, when you're doing this kind of calculation, these aren't any kind of de facto numbers. These are, here's a, an interesting starting point and try it from there. Now it happens that they actually work out pretty well. So it's a, it, you know, it's probably a good measure. And, you know, I have to assume that if you're a Glowforge user uh, and you start with these numbers and convert them to the numbers over on the other side, uh, you're gonna come up with something again that is a good starting point and will probably be pretty close. So keep that in mind. Anyway, let's take a look at, at some of the cuts and engraves and see what it what it looks like. I mean, this is really just a quick video to say, hey, there's no reason we need to go to a cultural war because we have different lasers because at the base, they're all the same. And you know, I think what's important is we have a community and uh, it honestly doesn't matter whose name is on your laser. And this will be the proof. If you look at some of these quick videos I shot, you'll see that, hey, if you're a Glowforge user, you'll recognize that these settings actually work and vice versa if you go the other direction. Now, if you do have a Glowforge and you try this translation back, put a comment down below and let me know how it works. Anyway, let's go with the videos here. Okay, so as you can see, I now have a handful of stars and 
they look the way they're supposed to look and somehow I'm not surprised. So, uh, you know, just uh, keep in mind, well, two things. First of all, we are one community. We're a community of laser owners. But the actual translation of settings from one platform to another is actually reasonably simple. So, uh, you know, if you see a project uh, that I do and you have a Glowforge, I always generally put the settings that I'm, I'm putting down on the laser when I lay things out. Um, you can take those and vice versa. If you, if you go to a site like, like Troy's uh, channel and you see a project where he posts his uh, settings, uh, try them out and use this simple calculation. Divide the speed by 10, and if you have a 45 watt laser, then uh, multiply things by 0.89 on the power side. Set the current the same as the power, and odds are good you're going to come out with something that looks pretty okay. Uh, you know, you can still tweak it. Now, on a Glowforge, and again, if there's a Glowforge uh, user, uh, you know, that can kind of help here. I couldn't find anywhere where they talk about engraving things at say 20% or 50% like I have in my material settings. You know, I assume that you just kind of feel around in the dark and get the power set right and then everything is good. That may or may not be the case though. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, if you are a Glowforge expert, feel free to put a comment down in the comment section. Just to say, you know, if I want a 50% engrave versus a 10% engrave, how do I do that setting? Is there some notion of, of power levels for engrave in, in the Glowforge? Anytime I've looked at a Glowforge in the past, I didn't see anything specific, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So, you know, hopefully uh, you got a bit out of this quick video. Uh, sorry, mostly me talking this time, but I think there's value in understanding our brothers and sisters over on on the Glowforge side and vice versa, right? Having them come over and, and I'm, you know, I certainly welcome people coming to my channel as well. So feel free to uh, play around here, provide feedback and we'll, you know, we'll all get along. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll say that's it. And uh, as always, I'll put a video over on the side. And if you are buying a Muse over a Glowforge, feel free to use my code in the description and, We'll see you next time. Go make your world.